Welcome to another episode of Dev Tool Them All. Today, we're going to Dev Tool Netflix. I need to be very careful. I'm going to blur any video. I'm going to mute any audio so I don't get copyright struck. Obviously, I'm not going to stream anything where we're going to look at the Dev Tool portion of this. And if you if you guys don't know, this is the series where we pick popular website and look at the requests sent from the browser by the application client to understand how the back end works how the streaming is done is in particular case how the content is delivered what kind of protocol is being used and all sorts of cool things how about we jump into it all right as usual we always go to netflix.com we avoid any other thing and we try to hit enter immediately i'm gonna pause this I need to be logged in to view anything in Netflix. So I am logged in with my account. I'm using a VPN so that to hide any information about me. Obviously, uh, this I created a new account in my Netflix just for this viewing so that my behavior is not uh, uh, reflected here. Or I want I want to try as much as possible to get a brand new user behavior. I also clicked on some of the shows and played some of them just to test uh, and make sure everything is working through the VPN and also to test the resume portion of this app. So the first thing we notice, what do we notice? What do we notice? We're sending a request to www.netflix.com. We're getting redirected. That's fine. One redirect is absolutely fine, right? I don't know if you noticed, but I typed Netflix.com, but we went to www.netflix.com. That tells me that the browser saved that fact uh, prior. That means if I visit Netflix.com, immediately go to www.netflix.com and always use HTTPS, so it's always secure by default. So we are being redirected to slash browse. So this is a decision made by Netflix so, so they can create content for your behavior. So if we clicked on the browse, the request being sent here took 800 milliseconds. And I noticed this fluctuate took 1.5 seconds, sometimes 800. But this tells me that there is server side logic being run to create this particular content for me. Let's see this. So if I click on preview, look at this. The content that I get from that request alone, I get the image, I get these, and look at this. I want you to pay attention to this. This is just an image, by the way, right? This is not clickable yet. This is just HTML with a bunch of images. And I wanted to notice this. So they did the calculation to look at how far I watched Cobra Kai and they showed this progress bar. So there is some sort of a calculation that is happening on the back end to generate this HTML. Uh, what kind of server do they use? If I look at the server, you can't trust the server property. Sometimes it's overridden, right? Because you can easily change this. But look at this. It's like core prod release 1.3 baseline. I have no idea what this server is obviously that tells me that so, uh, uh, netflix actually write this thing uh, arbitrary or maybe mean something to their client um they're using http2 just for netflix to come we're gonna come to the rest but look at this guys the moment you start seeing these white lines this is a bad indication this tells me that they are using to retrieve certain content they're are requests that are being starved and stalled, right? The, the white line basically means, hey, I don't have enough resources to send this request to this particular domain. I'm full. So 300 millisecond wait, right? 330 millisecond, 330. So all of these guys are waiting, right? They can't send any requests. Why? All of these requests are just downloading the thumbnails, literally. And where are they downloading them? All of them from the same domain. And what do we know with HTTP 1.1? You can only open six connections, six TCP connection per domain. That's at least what Chrome does. And it's just a limit that, that Chrome has. So that means you can only send six requests at concurrently. The probably these requests are being sent previously here, right? And then we're done. So there's some sort of stalling that can be solved with HTTP2 here. How bad it is? I don't know. You you might feel it when you open Netflix at the first time, but they probably they don't want to do anything about it. 
that's fine again guys i don't i don't just tell anything that HDB one one let's move to HDB three or two no right uh, you know you you watched my hacker nose video there is no reason to move to HDB two or three if uh, because there is a cost to moving to those protocols right the cost of cpu memory etc while HTTP 1.1 is a very simple direct protocol there is no you know system activities going to you know to organize the streams and and parse the packets and segments to find what you're looking for right there's none of that HTTP one is simpler but there is some bottlenecks that you can reach right so you only move when you absolutely need it and it sounds like netflix needed here <laughs> right like this there's there's a lot of stalling going on here so okay uh, we're viewing all these images that is that is not a big deal right i want you to now take a look at this i'm gonna resume recording again and i am going to make sure to scroll down all right let's go to Cobra Kai, but I'm going to clear everything. I'm going to resume recording. Hopefully I don't hit anything else in the way. And then I'm going to hover over Cobra Kai and just let it capture some, some requests. I'm going to pause it again. Let's see what happened now. Ca hovering over a title in Netflix will effectively bring some metadata. We'll play some content, which I'm going to blur here, uh, showing you the content, like a preview of the content and retrieve some interesting information that we're going to talk about here so the first request is a post request and uh, i'm not sure what is what this does but it looks like it's it's posting it doesn't return anything right but it's posting my current state to the server right so it's not really very informative but the first request the second request is downloading the same image which we actually have so i think this is a wasted request but we're doing it anyway maybe they're doing that because i have disabled cache enabled this is always a tongue twister for me disable cache maybe they're just hey ignore everything and cache. i really doubt it but they're sending this request again plus that downloading that image caused another connection to be established effectively we did an initial connection we did a tc tls as well so let's go to the next request path evaluator so this path evaluator thing is very interesting if i go to the preview look what we got this is the metadata of this information right if i go to this let's zoom in so you guys can see there's a bob summary bob summary and this is basically the metadata of the actual uh video so it tells you that this is cobra kai uh, there is other information about like the ratings and stuff like that and i think you can get the user rating from here so the user rating is what sometimes it's hard to see zero that means basically it wasn't released probably but sometimes this gets populated and here's my favorite thing the router the netflix router is one of the interesting architectural back end design that i've seen in a while right and i've heard this in a podcast way back maybe seven eight years ago right but i never seen it until today right when i prepared for this video when you click on result look at this the router the netflix router actually tells the client which server has this content right it tells you obviously client ip address that's wrong that's not my ip address <laughs> <laughs> right because i i am connected to another place but plus it's 192 right 192 192.109 is i think it's a public ip address 192.168 is a private uh, local network but yeah if i keep scrolling there's a property called servers look at that this property is actually all the servers that have this content the ip address of that server the domain of that server right ibv4 like which type of uh, uh, ip protocol it uses c50 lax which I, i'm here in uh, la i'm using a vpn la so it gives you the dns information it gives you some key information like high i guess the the bandwidth on this thing uh it, there's another server right all the other servers here you can see server 50 
32. So these are a pool of servers to give to the client to connect. This is as opposed, this is what I refer to as uh, client load balance, client side load balancing, where you give the client a bunch of servers and the client decides which one to hit. Okay? Versus the server side load balancer, which is what we all know, we use, you use a reverse proxy, which acts like a load balancer. And transparently, that load balancer uh, shifts you to any server, right? So you take the load from the reverse proxy and puts it on the client side. And I always been fascinated. I really wanted to see something uh, like this in the, in the wild. And this is the first time I actually seen it. So this is basically how they do client-side load balancing by letting the client choose which server. Obviously, you have you lose certain metadata here because you don't have the knowledge as if it's if you have a centralized server. But the beauty is you don't you no longer have a, a one uh, uh, central point of failure, which is the load balancer. I understand you can do layer three load balancing and. Uh, use the VRRP protocol to uh, have the same IP addresses on multiple machines. And uh, you, you can use DNS also to do the geo load balancing, all sorts of tricks, but still, right? This is interesting regardless. So I, I just wanted to talk about that. I, I love it a lot. And uh, once we once we get these servers, you'll notice that they will, get, they will stop being used here. So, uh, so the, we're downloading content from 50, 78, 50, 50, 78. So now we're going to start establishing HTTP1 connections. Again, I think this is a bottleneck, right? But it doesn't seem like we have this bottleneck here with the videos because we're downloading a tiny video. But look at this. We're downloading all this content now, right, through different uh, avenues effectively, right? And uh, this is basically, what is this? This is Octet stream. So they're not using the HLS, the HTTP live streaming. They're using their own, maybe prop proprietary. They're using probably a proprietary protocol here for doing it because it's an Octet stream. And we, you, can, you can actually take that, right? And then copy, right? And then you can paste it and it will get downloaded, right? The reason it get downloaded, because there is, a token here that represents me not if i send you this link you can download it obviously because you have my token but if i change this to something else you get forbidden right that means the server is doing some sort of an authentication as well and here we know what they are using look at this you can tell so much information of the back end it's like a stripping it naked i love it so and you can also tell that the nginx is the server here and i love what they did here i don't know if you noticed with the previous uh, uh diff tooling sessions if you don't do anything to this header it will show the nginx version which i believe personally i think it's bad you never release what version you're using to the client because this could be exploited right because there might be a bug in certain nginx version and you can easily scan the web for bad nginx versions and exploit that right if if you don't have this information you hide that information because the client doesn't really need to know the nginx versions right unless there is a feature that is explicitly in certain nginx version you don't really need to that so any information about hackers that gives hacker any tip remove it effectively that's a, just a best security um practice and uh, i'm gonna interest in, it's the same thing we're just downloading the video again i really think http 1.1 for video is good for serial like when downloading one video maybe that's fine but http 2 i don't recommend i think but http 3 if you're downloading a lot of concurrent requests sent at the same time, definitely that will save you connection times. Definitely that will sing, save you a number of connections because you don't need to open these, all this number of connections to send concurrent requests, right? which to be three, you get TLS for free for the first handshake. And I, I feel like a salesman, I don't know why. You get all this stuff for free. <laughs> But yeah, I believe HTB3 is a good choice for here. I'm 
pretty sure Nginx has considered that. Pretty sure they did, right? And they choose that HTTP 2, I don't think is going to give them a lot because of the TCP hit of line blocking. But with the concurrent requests, like sending all this thing, predicting the future, hey, the user are going to play all these segments. Let's download all this stuff, right? So let's go and clear this and then actually click on Cobra Kai. And hopefully we don't... Uh, I'm gonna now click on it so we can go to that page, right? Let's, let's let it let it let it rip, let it rip, let it rip. I'm gonna blur this. You're not gonna see anything, so no spoilers. <laughs> You're not gonna see anything, hopefully. And then I'm gonna let this download. And now I'm gonna pause the video. So here's here's what I'm gonna do now. I want you to notice this. I don't. I'm not interested to look at this because we kind of looked at how Netflix downloads the content, but. I'm going to now clear this and I'm going to show you something I absolutely love here. Look at this. When I scroll over this, we see we see the thumbnails, right? So look how ingenious this thing is. This is genius. What's the difference between ingenious and ingenious? I, th I know there is a difference, but I, I'm not quite sure. This is genius. We're immediately getting the thumbnails. If you ask someone to build something like this, they would obviously fetch that content immediately so there will be requests going to the server but no none of these requests are going to the server look at this there's blob at the middle of them and i made a video maybe three years back about how genius this thing is this is called create object url you would basically download the entire set of thumbnails and save them in memory and reference, reference them by ID. So this is a, a unique identifier for that image. So now all these images are in memory for that particular browser, right? And that's why they are blazing fast. When you hover, you can immediately see that. And this is another genius design. You might say, Hussain, isn't that dumb to download? All? How would you download all possible, uh, how many episodes, how many minutes, 30 minutes worth of thumbnail? No, look at this. If you notice, let's zoom in. Uh, ah, damn it. They, they won't show us. Ah, there you go. One, two, three, four, five, ten. One, two, three, four, five, ten. So every 10 seconds, they change the thumbnail. It's a 10 second thing. So it's easy to break this whole video into a 10 second segment and down and, and literally request everything to be downloaded for the 10 seconds. That's how much, that, that's not much, right? For, so for a hundred second video, that's just 10 images. For a thousand second video, that's just hundred images. You can download them up front to give the users this beautiful scrolling immediately fast design right so if i do this now again let's go here and then pause look at this so we're downloading these images obviously but now we're sending the request i wanted to pay attention to the request now here okay let's take a look at this now the requests are these requests to download the actual segments of the videos. And, and Netflix tries to, as much as possible, to hide this information, right? Or, or at least encode it. Look at the E, 38. This is, I believe this is the event ID or the video itself, the title. So that's always 38, no matter what, it's always 38. And so that tells me this is the Copra Kai title. But I want you to pay attention to the token. The token sometimes is the same, sometimes it changes. Why? Because sometimes you're hitting a different server, which gives you, which hands you a different token, obviously, right? There you go. We are hitting some different server. There you go. So I had to refresh multiple times to see the client side load balancing here. We're hitting server 68 and then server 5 and then 68, 68. And then, uh, yeah. Uh, what we notice here is every time we hit the same server, we get the same token right? But the moment we hit another server, we get a different token, right? That kind of makes sense, right? And not necessarily. So that means those servers are completely isolated, right? They're not using the same uh, authentication mechanism. Each server actually hands out a unique token for that server. We're not talking to, the, to some sort of another backend that authenticates that. The server itself authenticates itself. Another kind of a genius decentralized. You notice that 
Netflix is is all about this decentralization as, as much as much as possible. Obviously, the whole thing is in AWS. So if AWS went down, Netflix will, will go down. I don't know if they moved out uh, from to another cloud provider, but yeah. So yeah, guys, this is all what I wanted to discuss. I think I think uh, some of the designs are fascinating. Some of them, I think, really the um, the the HDB one one they might have thought about this probably, and they want to move to HDB two or three so, so they might have thought about it that they made some experiments like, okay does it buy us any value to move to hdb2 how much concurrency are we gonna getting how much performance are we gonna getting uh maybe they didn't see that much value they so they went back to a simple hdb11 uh, that's probably it but a quick will definitely give them more i believe uh concurrency and high throughput if uh, if i'm not mistaken um that being said, remember guys, quick doesn't come cheap. Uh, there will be an extra CPU cycle that maybe Netflix are not willing to pay yet, right? Because HTB1 doesn't have this complexity uh, at, at the server, at the back end, uh, to, to kind of parse these packets and kind of reassemble them together. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.